Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Homer Noel Bautista, a member of the faculty of Union Christian College. Body learning model. Mathematics is an important part of our modern world. To be well adjusted in modern society, we not only need to be literate, but also must be numerate. Sadly, many students find difficulty learning math. This study was conducted in response to the need for suitable strategies that can be implemented to improve mathematics instruction, particularly in the senior high school. Mathematics performance of students is low, and this is true not just in the Philippines, but in other countries as well. It is evidenced by standardized tests like the TEAMS, which was conducted in 2015. Another problem is that, large, that class sizes are large, with 45 to 55 students in a class. This large class size limits the individualized learning instruction that a teacher can give his or her students. It can also lead to behavioral problems inattentiveness, disengagement, and unproductive noise. Body learning is one solution that can be adopted. It is an active learning strategy, and as we know, students learn better when they are active rather than passive. It taps the more skilled students and gives them an opportunity to apply their knowledge and skills, and it provides us lower learners somebody they can rely on other than their teacher. Body learning is one solution that can be adopted with some modifications. In the original concept, bodies refer to pairs, but in this study, bodies can refer to two or more learners working together. Methods. To determine the effectiveness of body learning in improving the performance of grade 11 students, two sections were chosen to serve as control and experimental groups. They were given pre-test before the start of a unit and a post-test after. The results were compared to determine if there was a significant difference. For the qualitative part, an interview with selected participants was conducted at the end of the study to gather their insights and impressions on how the body learning strategy was implemented and whether it was effective or not. And finally, a body learning model was formulated based on the feedback gathered from the participants and the researchers' observations. The model was validated by a panel of expert educators. The results. On the level of competence before and after the intervention, for the control group, at the start of the first and third units, they were approaching competence. They maintain this level of competence at the end of the unit with much higher scores. For the second unit, they started not competent and ended being competent. For the experimental group, the experimental group started not competent in the first and second units and ended up approaching competence. For the third unit, they started and ended on the same level, approaching competence. Overall, both groups improved their level of competence. The control group at the start was approaching competence and ended competent. The experimental group started not competent and ended approaching competence. For the comparison between pre-test and post-test scores, for the control group, the increase in the post-test scores is significant in all units taken separately and overall. For the experimental group, the increase in the post-test scores is significant in the first two units and overall. There was, no, there was a significant decrease in the third unit. For the comparison of the level of competence between the control group and the experimental group, in the pretest, the control group had a significantly higher level of competence than the experimental group. In the post-test, 
the control group also had a significantly higher level of competence than the experimental group. The results of the qualitative analysis seems from the participants interview. Number one, grow together. Working with others is better than working all alone. Difficulties and fun are shared. Number two, the importance of synergy. I may know something she does not know, and she may know something I do not know. And when we come together, we share what we know. Number three, the importance of a leader. There has to be a leader in the group, otherwise nothing will happen to the group. Number four, logistical advantages. There are advantages that come from pooling resources of the members of the group. And finally, bodies can prod you along when you slack off. Discussions. If we take the results of the pre-test and post-test as the sole basis to determine if the body learning strategy works, we might conclude that it did not, at least in this particular case. This would be the logical conclusion since the control group consistently had a higher level of competence than the experimental group. However, if we consider the observations made by the participants in which they confirmed that the strategy did contribute positively to their overall learning experience, we could not as easily discard the strategy for being ineffective. These other advantages derived from the strategy were not measured by the study. We should also consider that many other things are happening in the academic life of students aside from what is happening in one particular subject or course. The lower post-test scores of the experimental group in the third unit might be partially due to their participation in the intramurals and the fact that other requirements from other subjects were also coming due around this time. Taking all the foregoing things together, the researcher endeavored to come up with a model that can be adopted in the teaching of statistics and probability. Among the different factors considered, one that was emphasized was the need for support for the body learning group. Implementing a body learning strategy does not just constitute assigning students to a group and then letting them loose. The group will need a lot of support to help it succeed. The body learning model that was developed is presented here as a process. It starts with an initiation stage in which the teacher identifies items in the curriculum that are suitable for group work. And then at the start of the semester, we organize the, the groups, we set their goals, targets, define their roles, and help them develop a body spirit. And then for the rest of the semester, we implement where we motivate, reinforce, guide, and discipline the students. And then at the end of each unit, we evaluate. We determine what worked and what can be improved. And then based on this evaluation, we recalibrate and reorganize. So we iterate the process through the different units. And at the end of the semester, we close, we clean up, and we reflect on what transpired so that we can improve the next time we do it again. In conclusion, although the experimental group which used the body learning strategy did not perform significantly better than the group that underwent the usual set of instructional methods and strategies, this should not mean that body learning is not effective, but rather that it does require planning and support to make it work. The participants saw their experience with body learning as a positive and good learning experience. In particular, they saw their collaboration skills and self-esteem as having been enhanced by the use of this strategy. Thank you very much for listening.